Uh, thirdly, we have uh, Frederick Rucker Jr., a Six Sigma MBA mathematician with professional experience as a realtor and broker. He will address how religious values can be sustained through the reuse of houses of worship in local communities. Frederick? You need to unmute yourself, Frederick. You're, you're muted. Pardon me. Uh, thanks again for having me this morning. Is that better? <laughs> yes, thank you. And, um, and uh, greetings to everyone on the panel. Uh, I come today with a particular interest in the topic here in Atlanta as a broker. I sit on a panel, a, a board with the Atlanta City Council called the Invest in Southwest Atlanta Task Force. And as many people know here in Atlanta, we've got quite a bit of development in real estate, a lot of transition, a lot of uh, gentrification of neighborhoods and churches are quite um, prominent landmarks in communities here. Uh, and so it is a particular interest for me. Um, my uh, article will, top, will address the topics of different tiers of how uh, we may be able to use grant and federal money to assist churches that are vacated and being repurposed to meet the needs of the current community. And as we know, houses of worship and other religious architecture contribute to our soul, our personal outlook on life, and our spiritual well-being. And I'll explore some constructive religious land repurposing options that our buildings of reverence evolve into to meet the needs of the community. Uh, churches are not just architectural structures used for Christian worship or other faiths. Their appearance features and features behold a spiritual essence that compels most people to feel some degree of reverence. And there are over 100,000 historic houses of worship across America today that play a crucial role in shaping the character of our communities. Currently, there are 34 churches for sale in the state of Georgia with an average sales price of $1.7 million, according to LoopNet. And the average square footage of those churches is 20,000 square feet per property. So there's plenty of room for uh, repurposing community use in those spaces. And there are several solutions in new land best land use options to allow a vacated church and house of worship to continue to serve its community in social and economic equity. One great use of a vacated church is to make them community conflict resolution centers. Uh, we may even use them as mediation meeting rooms for um, legal um, mediation and arbitration, or even Zoom virtual login locations for businesses in the area. The vacated congregation could take responsibility for extending their church missions also by adopting a faith-based conflict resolution center, which would open doors to federal grant funding to keep the church doors open while the church continues to expand their outreach and maybe even relocate to a new home. Uh, this may be in partnership between the judicial system and vacated churches and houses of worship in that jurisdiction. If a city or county is in the market for a community center, an art center, a library, or a human resources or human services hub, it could consider a church as a potential site. Now, I kind of grouped the assessment process that I proposed for this um, um, reassessment and repurposing into three to four tiers. The first tier would be uh, funding for support of churches that are, could qualify for National Trust and Historic Preservation funding. And this proposed tier one assessment designation of a church or house of worship that's vacant would be granted to landmark churches that have been documented in our public events. The architecture structure um, has also been well maintained or it has an icon, it is an iconic landmark in the community. 
at this tier two designation level, assessment of a current congregation's community development growth strategy should be reviewed while the congregation is in the process of vacating the church. And this gives them an opportunity to carry on with whatever their mission is in that community while expanding the church and also receiving funding to help with operations um, while they maintain their presence in the community. Tier three uh, of that assessment would consider government control of the land and its operation. The tier three is a milestone that converts the church or house of worship from a nonprofit land use to a for-profit land use. In tier four designation, uh, the vacated church would possibly be completely renovated or completely demolished in that case. Of course, that's the last option. Uh, considering just the significance of the structure and its uh, image and impact on our character and our being uh, as a place of good work. So we want to make the demolition of it the very last resort. And of course, that's based on code and condition and maintenance requirements of that building. If the vacated church or house of worship re receives a tier four designation, the municipality would have complete control of the lands to meet the immediate needs of the community, whether it changes for profit purposes or whether they decide to continue to do social services. Maybe there's a need for daycare um, or other services that the government offers in that community. As the world increasingly turns digital, there's a degree of incrementally negative change in character and interpersonal skills when a person decides that IT should completely replace human presence and utility. The social media platforms have replaced the need also for people to go physically and habitually to church or other houses of worship, which have contributed to our need to reconsider how the churches are used in the future. Indeed, vacant churches and houses of worship must experience rebirth if they are to always be a lighthouse in the communities they serve. This rebirth, the repurposing of their best land use, is definitely a responsibility, I believe, of the government to ensure that the best land use of all our parcels of land, in particular our houses of worship, are executed for community services, economic development, social responsibility, and neighborly networking. And I look forward to any opportunities I have to further the conversation uh, uh, with this topic in the future. And thank you so much for having me here.